What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, September 13th. We're gonna go over all the positions and all the trade alerts, but before we do, let's talk about who got caught being hot in the community this week. Uh, this week goes to a new member, goes by the handle Bespoke Trader 14 and he uh, kind of jumped in with two feet, asking a lot of questions, starting some great conversations that I know is helpful to other traders as well. So. Congrats, Bespoke. Keep up the good work. Can't wait to continue watching you grow as a trader. Uh, let's jump into the alerts and, and first take a look just at the overall market. If we look at the S&P 500, you know, we had that huge, uh, that little bout of volatility and then just some, some big swings kind of in a box range here, kind of stayed in this range for a while and now it's just broken out. Now we're seeing uh, you know, the price of the S&P kind of hover near the all-time highs. So be interesting to see what, what happens from here. You know, obviously we have a little bit of short delta. So anytime you get a, a rip higher like this, you know, that, that's going to be, that's going to work against your short delta positions. But we haven't been overly short. In fact, we're about, uh, well, right now we're about three to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. So we're still in good shape there. Obviously, a little bit of downside movement could definitely benefit that, uh, but we'll just continue to, to uh, stay mechanical and work our trades as we do. Uh, if we jump into the alerts, starting with the 9th on Monday, scroll down to the first trade here. First trade was a, a rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So we had a long put vertical that we've been holding for that short delta exposure in Apple. Uh, with the September positions at that point down to 11 days to expiration, we went ahead and rolled this out to October uh, to keep that short delta extend duration on that trade. So if we take a look at Apple, and it's down almost 2.5% today. You know, Apple came out with their new iPhone release, and I haven't even actually seen, but I don't, so I don't know if that has to do with uh, the, just the perception of what that is and what's going on, but um, definitely down the last couple days after that announcement. And so you can see prices hanging out right here inside of our range, uh, just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit that. If we go back to the next trade here, closing trade in oil. So we had a short strangle in oil, booked over 30% of max profit on that one. We were only in that one for a couple of weeks and it was dead centered. So we went ahead and took that off and we'll look to potentially uh, re-enter uh, if IV stays high in, um, in oil. So. Uh, we are completely out of that at this point. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IYR. So we had a uh, an October iron condor booked around 30% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And then we're still holding our short call vertical in September. So if we take a look at IYR, uh, it's down a little bit today, which is helping us. So our price is right at the break even. We just need a little bit more and we'll book uh, a nice profit on that IYR piece. Now, we might also look to add to this uh, next week. Applied volatility is popping up today. Uh, if we, in, in the next week, we will probably look to add to this. And just to show you, so right now we've got seven days left to expiration in September. So we'll be closing out uh, this uh, short call vertical next week. And then the October options have 35 days and you can see the November options have 63. So once we get into next week, we'll be under 60 days to expiration in November. So we're gonna start building our November uh, positions starting next week. And so if we add to this, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll have the choice to either do it in October, which will be around 31, 32 days into early next week. And then November will be at 60. So we'll probably start building out in November. Uh, but look for that. If implied volatility is decent, we'll add another piece in IYR and, uh, and, and collect some more credit centered around the current price. Uh, and then we'll exit that short call vertical that's currently in September. So that's the plan in IYR. We've got an opening trade in SPX. So this was a, uh, a double calendar that we opened, a weekly double calendar. We did this when we had seven days to expiration on the front week. And so if we take a look at that, go to SPX, what we've got here is it's still, still pretty centered. Uh, implied volatility actually contracted after the fact, after we put this on. Uh, so let me click on those here. Uh, so implied volatility contracted, so we're actually down slightly on the trade, even though it's dead centered. So 
could have got in at much better prices than we did. Uh, but that's just the way the the nature of trading. Sometimes you get better, sometimes you get a little worse, but it, it all kind of evens out over time. So uh, just looking for this to kind of stay in this range here over into next week. And hopefully we can book a profit on that one. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So starting to do our rolls. Like I said, September is down to seven days to expiration. So over next week, we've got a handful of positions still left in um, in September. So we're going to be either rolling or closing those next week. And we don't want to do it all in one day, but we'll be over the next week. We're going to be you know doing a couple of those at least each day uh, to either roll those out to October or potentially out to November, since we'll be under 60 days there. Uh, and then um, you know there there might be situations on some of them where we close as well instead of roll. So. We'll deal with that next week, uh, but this was uh, QQQ. So we had two sets of short call vertical spreads. Uh, this is the one that's still in September. You can see way out of range uh, with this, you know, NASDAQ has been strong with the rest of the market. So that piece is out of range. And then the other piece uh, from the alert that we rolled is this one here. So it's come down a little bit since we did that roll. But again, just holding these for that short delta exposure. And so looking for some more downside to benefit that. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in ZB. So we had uh, two different short strangles on. We closed this one. We were well over 60% of max profit on this piece of the trade. This was the one that was really inverted after that huge up move in bonds. Uh, but price has come down really sharply uh, over the last week and a half or two. And so we went ahead and booked this one, reduced our overall exposure to ZB. Uh, and then we actually added another piece on today. So I'll go to the uh, I'll go to ZB here in just a minute when we get to that alert. Um, oh, here it is. In fact, it's the very next alert. So this was this morning. We went ahead and and sold a new strangle, and just kind of recentered it around price. And so I want to go to the chart of bonds first because man, what a what a move here. And we you know we had this huge up move that we were battling, rolling up our puts, rolling out in time, and now all of a sudden it's reversed with a sharp move lower. And so this just this just shows, we, and we talked a little bit about this when Chad and I did our update on Tuesday, where, I mean, literally, it can take just a few days to reverse course and get back uh, to where you want it. Now, in this case, so we've got the, uh, we've got two pieces. This is our other adjusted short strangle. And so, whereas we were kind of battling it to the upside, now it's ripped all the way down here uh, and just outside of our range on the downside. Now, if you look at our calls, we've still got a decent amount of premium left in those, so we're not necessarily looking to roll our calls down quite yet, but if price continues lower, that's exactly what we'll do. We'll just roll those calls down closer to price. We've got a lot of time in this cycle still, 42 days to expiration, so not looking to roll out in time yet, but just roll down those, those puts to collect some more credit and, and keep that piece going. Now, the other, uh, the other piece that we have that we just put on from the alert today is this short strangle. And you can see price has already moved down a little bit since we put this on. So it's just out of center down uh, to the downside, uh, but still well within range. So just playing the waiting game here, waiting for some more time to pass to, uh, to benefit that. Next trade was a closing trade in SPX. So we had another double calendar on in SPX. Today was the last day of trading. And so we went ahead and closed this out. Ended up taking a small loss. It was just outside of our range. Uh, we held it all the way till today to the last day just to see if we get a little bit of down movement in stocks to take that off. But trading's been pretty muted, pretty flat today. If we like, uh, look at a chart of SPX, um, it's, uh, I mean, just a tiny, tiny range here. So we were looking for potentially a little quick move in the morning uh, to help us get out for a profit, but you know, didn't want this thing to continue ripping higher and, and give us a bigger loss. So we got out for a couple hundred dollar loss on that one, uh, so so not bad. Um, and, and then again, we have that we have that uh, that other one that we just put on that's that's pretty well centered. So gonna hold that into next week and see what happens there. And then lastly, the last alert today, we did a rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So similar to QQQ, we had two sets of short call verticals, rolled one of those out from September to October, just trying to spread out those rolls. And then we'll address the other September one. We'll, we, we will roll that next week. So if we take a look at DIA, uh, 
again, strong with the rest of the market here. And here's the one that we just rolled. So you can see prices right where we did it. Uh, hasn't really moved much. And then we've got this other one in September, which is well out of range. So just looking to uh, potentially, you know, hopefully we get a little bit of a down movement uh, early next week, and then we can roll that at a little bit of price. So that's the plan in DIA. So those are all the trade alerts. Let's take a, take a look at some of our other positions. Yes, another short delta position that we are going to address next week. It's got seven days to expiration. And so we'll roll that next week. If you look at gold, gold coming down nicely. So this uh, short call vertical spread, prices come back, back down in range. If we can get a little bit more down movement in the next week, we'll be able to book an overall profit on that iron condor. And then, with, and then our other piece is already out in, um, well, what Toss calls November, but it's the cycle with 45 days left to expiration. And uh, you can see prices just kind of hanging out here in the lower end of the range. So ideally, price would continue a little lower. We'd book profits on that short call vertical, and then price would bounce back higher, back closer to center, and we could book a profit on this one too. Now we know price doesn't always do exactly what we want, so we'll see what happens, but that would be ideal. Natty gas, no movement today. I mean, it's it's literally flat uh, on the day. So, uh, and we're pretty pretty well centered on our two sets of short strangles here. So, just holding on to these, waiting for some more time to pass, some more theta to decay. I mentioned bonds, uh, wheat up just a tiny bit today, right back to dead center. Uh, we got some profit there, just waiting for a little bit more before we take that off. Uh, Apple, like I mentioned, it's down about two and a half percent. Uh, John Deere actually been really strong. We'll look to either roll or close this next week. We had a we we're at a point where I thought we were going to be able to just take this off or or roll it uh, for a credit, but now things have ripped higher. So we'll look to potentially extend duration. We may just cut our losses on that one. We'll we'll see where everything is at with our short delta exposure. You know, we, there was a question in the community today about the best way to adjust your short delta. You know, if you get get too short, when do we do that? And as a reminder, or for, for you newer traders, we like to keep a range of kind of one to one to five to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. So we beta weight our short delta to SPY to kind of create apples to apples comparison of our overall portfolio bias. And then we don't, we, we like to keep a little bit of short bias in our portfolio for those, you know, down moves that have a lot of velocity to them that, that helps us out on those positions. Um, and so we, we want, but we don't want to get too short, you know, and so we want to, we want to have an idea of where we are with our overall portfolio bias at all times. And cause things can change really quickly. We use kind of a range. So anywhere from one to one versus five to one on our short Delta versus our theta. And so, like I said, right now we're at about three to one. So we're right in the middle of that range. But if we, we start getting more and more short, then what we need to do is we need to do one of two things. We need to either add some long bias positions to kind of help massage that ratio, or we need to cut loose some short delta. You know, so this is one where we'll, we'll have to decide we're either going to roll it or we'll just cut it loose and remove that short delta. But we're not at a, we're not at a place on our ratio where we need to really get aggressive doing that. But, you know, that, that's what we'll be kind of looking at in the next week. I mentioned DIA, uh, EEM. So this is one that we just bought a long put on and with price ripping higher again, that's, that's kind of gone, that's gone against us there. Uh, so we'll be looking to just, we're not going to roll a long put. We're just going to close this out one next week and we'll probably end up closing it for loss unless we just get some kind of super sharp move lower, which obviously doesn't, uh, doesn't look like the case. Low probability chance of doing that. So we'll probably close that one for loss. EWZ, we've got a short strangle on here in EWZ. You can see price has breached the short call, uh, but this is out in October. So we've got 35 days left to expiration. So we're not in a huge hurry to make this adjustment. If we look at just the value of the puts, you can see we're getting to a point where we do want to roll those puts up to collect more credit. But um, so we're going to wait until next week. If price continues a little higher, then we'll just roll those puts up. Uh, stay in October with uh, because we do have a decent amount of time left there. You know, I would look to potentially add to this, but the problem is implied volatility is so low. Uh, I'm just not looking to sell premium in something with implied volatility that low. 
Goldman Sachs, again, another kind of hyperbolic move to the upside with very little pullbacks. And uh, we'll look to either roll or close this one. We've got this uh, you know, uh, long put vertical on that we put on for some short delta, and it's moved against us. So we'll address that one next week as well. I mentioned IYR. KRE, so this one has moved just outside of our range. And so, again, kind of similar to EWZ, where if you look at the puts, you know, we've got a little bit of premium left in those, but if it continues higher, we'll roll those puts up. If we look at a chart, you know, implied volatility is decent here. So if we can get a little bit of a pop in implied volatility into early next week, we'll roll those puts up, but we'll also look to potentially add a new centered short strangle around the current price. And the fact that we will be you know, into a point of November being under 60 days to expiration, we will add that in November. So that's the plan in KRE next week. I mentioned QQQ, SMH. So we've got an adjusted short strangle here. You can see prices hanging out right here on the break even. And you know, if we look at our puts on this side, still got a decent amount of premium. So not quite looking ready to roll our puts up on that yet. Uh, but we are, you know, if it continues much higher, we will look to potentially do that. It's already out in October, so we got plenty of time there. Uh, if we look at the IV levels, you know, they're, they've been contracting a little bit. IV percentiles at the 31 level. So uh, not looking to add another piece to this yet, but, uh, but we'll roll those puts up if price continues much higher. I mentioned SPX. SPY, so we've got two different pieces in SPY. We've got, uh, we've got a full iron condor here where you can see prices hanging out in the upper end of that range here, but nothing to do on that piece yet. Let me get this a little bit closer so you can see the whole thing. And this is the one where we kind of skewed the width of our call spread versus our put spread, uh, just to even out that P&L line. But if we could get a little bit of downside movement, we would book that one for a profit. And then the other piece is that short call vertical in September, which is quite a ways out of range. So we'll look to either roll or close that next week. And then XLF and XLK, both in similar positions where we've got uh, this uh, long put vertical here that's way out of range. So we'll, we'll look to roll or close that next week. And XLK, same situation. Price is out of range, just needs some downside movement. And we'll look to roll or close that next week as well. So that's it for all the alerts, all the positions. Hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.